Hey everyone, in this video I want to explore hosting a website basically for free in Azure using the Azure Static Web Apps. As always, if this is useful, please like, subscribe, comment and share and hit that bell icon. So I want to think about, hey, I want to have a website, so my website, and my goal for this website is, well, not only do I want to have the content, I want to be how to have my own custom domain name, like onboardtoazure.com, and I want it to be encrypted. So I want to be able to do that kind of HTTPS, and I want that included as well. And I'm going to take a very, very simple example. Um, one is a very basic website, the other is actually doing a redirection to my YouTube channel, because uh, there's various ways I could achieve that. Now, we're focusing on pre-rendered content, i.e. a HTML file, um, CSS, images, JavaScript in that HTML file. We're not doing server-side resources, and I'll talk more about that. Now, we're going to use a Git repo. So as part of this, we're going to have our repository. Now, I am going to use GitHub. This could be private or public, so once again, this is free. And the whole point is, hey, I'll be working on my machine to generate that content. Now, maybe I'm generating that content manually. Maybe I'm using libraries and frameworks like Angular, React, Vue, Blazor, whatever it is, or I'm just in Notepad editing HTML files. But I'm creating the content and I'm basically doing commits to my repo. So in my repo, I'm going to have my kind of HTML files, that pre-rendered content. This could include kind of JavaScript as part of that. I might have my style sheets and images. Nothing that requires any server-side processing. Now, if I did need server-side processing, when we talk about these, so my goal for hosting this is going to be these Azure Static Web Apps. So Azure Static Web Apps. And I can kind of do a personal hobby for free, so I don't pay anything for the hosting of these. There are paid versions, but they're all based around the fact that it's client-side. There's no server-side rendering. But if I did need some server-side logic, one of the great things about these Azure Static Web Apps is they can easily, and it's kind of built in, integrate with Azure Functions. So Azure Functions, remember, is that serverless technology, so it could go and do some server-side processing and return results, but the actual hosting on my site is going to be no server-side processing required. So my goal of this is I have my content right here. And so I'm going to have that in my repo. So if I quickly looked at mine, so if we jump over, I have super simple page. Now I've actually got a couple of sites. This is my repo. I've got one of them that I want to be able to redirect to my YouTube channel. And I can't use an alias because my YouTube channel is a URL. It's got a path in addition to YouTube.com. So I've created this super, super basic HTML page that basically just redirects me to my YouTube channel. That's really all this page does. So I've got that in my repo. Now I do have another website as well where I'm doing a bit more of that and you can kind of see those. So I have the basic content. I can have images you can see here, I can have a JSON file, but it's all things that are just gonna work on the client side. There's no server side processing required. And what this is basically doing is, this is a GitHub repo. So if I was to jump over for a second, and if I go to my github.com John the Brit, and if I go and look at my repositories, so one of them is my Learn Azure. So this is private, but it doesn't matter. And here is that folder. As you can see, that file is in the repo. I also have another folder where it's those other three files. So they're they're sitting in GitHub. And what's going to happen is with these um, Azure Static Web Apps, it integrates into my repo. So what's actually going to happen is, as part of this configuration, I tell it the repo I'm using, and it's going to integrate automatically with GitHub and Azure DevOps. And what it's going to do is actually set up a continuous deployment pipeline for me. 
So for example, in my GitHub, it's actually gonna use GitHub Actions. If it was Azure DevOps, it would create a pipeline. And what it's gonna do is anytime there's a commit or certain types of pull requests, it's gonna go and push this to my Azure Static Web App. Now, one of the things you'll notice about Azure Static Web Apps is I don't pick a region. And you might think that's kind of weird. Everything lives in a region. So what the Azure Static Web Apps are actually doing, Azure has this huge content delivery network. There are nodes all throughout the world. And what actually happens is the content I have at each commit, it sends it out to that Azure content delivery network. So all of my files, every time I update them, will they actually get populated in that content delivery network. So it's available all throughout the world. That's kind of just a native part of this solution. Now the way it does that, and if you want to actually see that in action, if we jump back over, is if we go and look at what it actually does, I can see I've got these GitHub workflows. And if I just go to actions, it's easier to see. So it created these GitHub actions for each of the different Azure Static Web Apps I have created. So I've got three of them. So what we can actually see if we just look at one of them, for example, so we can see here, okay, on a push to the main branch, and that's the branch I specified, or if there's a pull request to the main branch, then it's essentially gonna go and build and deploy. So I can tell it the type of framework library I'm using and it will integrate the build job as well. Or in my case, because I'm just using basic HTML, it just has to copy it over. And we can see here, hey, it's using the web apps deploy. It creates a token for me. And then it's got in here, the folder that I selected in my repo that it's actually going to use. And what it has also set up for me is if I go to my settings and my secrets, it's got an API token that is what it's gonna use to authenticate to my Azure Static Web App. So it does all of this for me. I don't actually have to do anything. And so what this looks like is I go to my Azure Static Web Apps, I hit create. Notice we can give it a name. We have this free option right here that lets me have two custom URLs, or I can do standard for enhanced features. I think it's five custom URLs. You can go and click that compare plans. Where I'm gonna have Azure function staging details, but this is not where it's actually hosting the content, that's on the CDN. And then you say, hey, is it coming from GitHub or something else? And what actually happens here is there's a whole VS Code extension that makes this a lot simpler. But if you had GitHub, you'd sign in, you'd select the repo, select the branch, and then give it the details about the various frameworks, etc. But that will then go and do everything. And what you essentially at that point would end up with, let's close this down, is you can see I've got three of them. So for example, in my Learn Azure, I've got my basic configuration. I can see I've added a next part, a custom domain, and that one actually canceled that. So let's go to that and delete it. So I wanted to show you how to add that. I can integrate with things like functions. I could change the plan. But what it does now is every time I do a commit to that repo, it's gonna go and populate that content. So let's go and look at my other one. This is a redirect to YouTube. So here you can see I've added custom domains. So that's the other part of this. So yes, it's gonna host it for me, but it's gonna have this weird, ugly name I don't want. So what I'm gonna do additionally is I can add custom domains. So to my static web app, I can absolutely add my own fully qualified domain name. And that can be a regular domain like www.onboard2azure.com, or it could be an apex domain, i.e. the root, such as just onboard2azure.com. And then once it's verified, I actually own that domain, either by I have an alias record pointing to it, or if it was, for example, an apex, I create a text record, it will then generate me a free SSL cert 
for that name as well because I've proved I own it because I was able to create that C name in the DNS zone that points to that. So if we look at that part of it, so if we jump back over again, so what I'm actually using is Azure DNS. Now, if I go to this Learn Azure, I have a spare. Let's refresh that. Hopefully once that's finished deleting. So what you'd be able to do is do add, but I forgot to actually go and delete that one. And it will let you go and select, hey, what domain do you actually, okay, so successfully deleted. Let's refresh. Okay, so now I can do add. So you would give it the name. So I could say maybe, hey, it's learn.ntfaq.com. And then it's gonna ask how you're gonna validate that. So either I create a C name record, which is gonna point to this value, or I can create a text record and I hit generate code and it will give me the code I have to generate. If it's an Apex, I it's the no www, it's just onboard to azure.com, it's the root of the DNS domain. I have to use a text-based validation. Now what I'm actually doing is I'm hosting my DNS actually in Azure as well. Now this has a small cost. So I think a DNS zone is 50 cents a month, then it's like 40 cents per million requests. So basically a dollar a month. This is the only part that's costing me money so far. The Git repo is free. The Azure Static Web App is free. So here you can see I've got kind of the various domains. And we can see for my onboard to azure.com, if it's just like a regular www, hey, it's just a C name that's redirecting to an Azure Static Web App. And this is a really good thing to do because here I can give it a name, I'll just do test. But if I do an alias record set, I actually select the Azure resource it's actually pointing to. Or if I make this a C name, then again, there's other sort of Azure Static Web Apps show up as well. And this now links this record to the Azure resource. And what's great about that is it stops dangling DNS. I did a whole video about dangling DNS. But basically it's a problem if I deleted the Azure Static Web App and forgot to delete this record I create, someone else would go and create that service with the same name and steal it. So this present, prevents that because I'm tying together this DNS record with the service it points to. So if this service goes away, it will invalidate this record. So basically now I go and add whatever record is required. So in most of my cases, it was a C name pointing to the Azure Static Web App. I also did create one at the root level. So I've got this at symbol and it's a host record, an A record pointed to Static Web App. And I had to create this TXT record here with the value it gave to validate I own it. So now my DNS points to the Azure Static Web App and we can see those because they're validated. So if I now go and look, for example, at my redirect to YouTube, I have two validated domains, onboard to azure.com and youtube.onboard to azure.com. Now you can only have two free, but these are free, so I just created a second one where then I added onboard to azure.com and ntfaq.com. And at this point, what it does for me is it actually creates that SSL record as well. So if I now went to HTTPS onboard to azure.com, now it's gonna to redirect to my YouTube channel. So there, it's gone straight to my YouTube channel. But let's look at a different site that doesn't do a redirection so we can see the certificate. So I've got this learn.onboard to azure.com. Now ignore the content because this is something I've just started to play with. But I notice I can do HTTPS it created this cert for me. And if I go and look at the security around this, we can see the certificate. Hey, yeah, it's a, a nice little cert. The root authority is DigiCert. And then the intermediate tree was this GeoTrust TLS. And then it's my learned on board to azure.com. This was all free. So once I validated that DNS name with my Azure Static Web App, it went and created me an SSL cert automatically. So I'm essentially hosting this for free. The Azure Static Web App is free, because I'm using that personal hobby option. Yes, from a DNS perspective, I have to host DNS somewhere. I'm using Azure DNS for about a dollar a month. 
but you could host it other places. Obviously, I have to own the DNS domain as well. But you can add up to two fully qualified domain names, custom DNS zones per Azure Static Web App. And again, you can have multiple Azure Static Web Apps because they're free. And then it, once it's validated, it will create the SSL cert for me as well. The GitHub repo I've used, even though it's private, is still free. The storage on the content delivery network is free. So at this point, there's really nothing else to do. It's just going to work. So now as a client, depending on where I am, so if I'm, for example, here, obviously I'm going to onboard to azure.com. It's gonna do a DNS set of steps. If it was a C name, it would then resolve to the DNS name of the Azure Static Web App, which would then return an IP address, this any cast by the content delivery network. If it's a host record in my DNS, it's just gonna resolve um, to the IP address. And once the DNS is done, I will then, because it's any cast, it will go to the closest one to me where I'll make my various requests over HTTPS, remember, and I'll get my various responses to the one closest to me. So I'm gonna get a great global experience. If I'm in US, I go to the US ones. Hey, if I was in Europe, I go to the Europe-based ones. I'm gonna get that really premium experience. So it's not just hosting it for free, it's actually distributed around the world to give the end users a great experience. Now again, this is for pre-rendered content. There is no server-side processing on the content delivery network. It can only serve up essentially files. But on the client, if there's JavaScript, hey, it can run through that. And again, if you did need a piece of server side, well, these Azure Static Web Apps can integrate with Azure Functions that could then go and do some server side processing and maybe give some result that I need or to go and do some action. Again, there's a VS Code extension for Azure Static Web Apps that really brings all of this together and makes it super simple. But really, that, that's the experience. So once you've got these set up, you kind of saw it exactly what it did. So now, hey, my learn.onboard2azure.com, it's HTTPS. I'm hosting it for free. It's just taking the files that I have in my source folder. And anytime I update this, anytime I do a commit or a pull request to main, what well, it's going to trigger that GitHub actions that will automatically then push it to the Azure Static Web App, which will push it to the Content Delivery Network. Hey, that continuous deployment is just natively built in. And again, if it was using some framework, it would do the CI, it would do the build. So it's all done for me. And then the experience is just completely seamless. Again, I like it because I wanted to redirect for my YouTube channel. So I have an Azure Static Web App that literally just does a refresh and redirects to my YouTube channel. So people can just go to, oh, okay, I can just say people, hey, look, it's on board to azure.com. And if they go to that, it's gonna bounce them straight away to my YouTube channel. And so that, that's it. Again, you can do much more complicated things to that. I really just scratched the surface of what you can do, but free website hosting. And it's not just a basic website, it's actually globally distributed and it lets me have my own custom domains and it gives me the SSL. Uh, I can really do what I want and it gives me that complete kind of CICD um, all through my free repos. Again, I, I'm using GitHub in this example. So I hope that was useful. Um, go and have a play around. Until next time, take care.